Hello, this is David DeHilster. I'm a critical thinker, science dissident, and I'm here to tell you the truth about science. Something your university professor won't tell you, the mass media won't tell you, and certainly those evangelists, science evangelists on TV will not tell you. Today I'm going to talk about something that at times I really have a hard time believing people do this. And it's sort of like lemmings all together jumping off a cliff. And that is mainstream physics and cosmology today, especially the theoretical side. It is the flat earth society of today. That means all these people, all this energy, all this money put into especially particle physics, a lot of the ideas in even the cosmology part of science, the theoretical part about the Big Bang and brains and parallel universes and multi-universes, uh, all of that. If you are following that, if you believe in it, if you work in it and earn your money, you are going to be relegated to the flat earth society of our generation. So when they find out, and they, we know the Big Bang is wrong, which we know, when they find out and we know already that re relativity is wrong. When they find out that particle physics, quarks, Higgs boson, all these things are wrong. And when we find out that the plate tectonics where Pangaea exists in this, ra this fixed radius Earth is not right and expansion tectonics is, wrong, is, is correct, all of you following those mainstream ideas are going to be forgotten your PhDs, your jobs, your papers, thousands, millions of papers, books, all of this stuff will be relegated to the past. It will be nothing in the future. And that's, I'm, at times I'm thinking, why is it that people jump off the cliff? They're so eager to follow the mainstream. And it comes down again to we feel powerful when we are in the majority. Just like a gang, we know this. Uh, I lived in Long Beach. There, it's a pretty urban area. One of the things I learned from police officers there is that gang members, when they are by themselves, are scared. When they are with their gang, they are all powerful. It's the same way with physicists. And the same way with uh, theoretical physicists and theoretic, uh, ast theoretical astrophysicists talking about these crazy things. So even, even if you are with a group and even if 99.9% .9 of the universities are teaching relativity as truth, as teaching plate tectonics as truth, as teaching particle physics as truth, as teaching the Big Bang as truth, it doesn't matter. If you look back in history, paradigm shifts, as Thomas Kuhn uh, coined that phrase, happen when the mainstream of science becomes religion, where people follow it religiously, where things go so far away from reality that eventually it comes crashing down. We are there. We have listened to the particle physicists that are interviewed by uh, Dr. Alexander Unsecker, uh, a great physicist in Germany fighting the great fight against this uh, incredulous, impossible, paradoxical world that, of unicorns they've, they've made. It's a case, again, I, I marvel at all of you who cling to this, You what I call intellectuals. Intellectuals are people who want to sp appear smart. They're not searching for truth. Critical thinkers search for truth on their own. Uh, intellectuals want to go to the party and say, oh, you know the latest about the Higgs boson? Oh, you know the latest? There's a guy on Dissident Science YouTube channel saying all this stuff is, is wrong. Ho, 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 ho. You know the only thing stupider than thinking it's all wrong? Is not thinking it's all wrong, to coin and use a phrase from Monty Python. Yeah, that is, if you are holding on to this stuff, and you know the latest of space-time. You know the latest of the Higgs boson. You know the latest of the LIGO detector of gravity waves. 
Hey, LIGO people, what's gravity? What's light? How does your inst how do your instruments work? Have a model for that? I tell you, I'm schooling. I'm even schooling Mr. Einstein here. Got to go to college again. But problem is the colleges and all the people teaching there are going to go down in infamy. They're going to they probably will just be forgotten. So people like Dr. James Maxlow, who is an expand the premier expansion technology tectonicist in the world. He will be in the, in the in the in the science books. Dr. Glenn Borker and his work with Infinity and the ten assumptions assumptions of science and his uh, groundbreaking work of neomechanics. Those things will be in the history books, and you read about those. You're not going to read about Stephen Hawking. Maybe as an aside, maybe there will be uh, history telling us how absurd these things are. Black holes. Yes, there are very dense objects. Yes, yes, yes. They're not black holes. There's no singularities. There's not infinite points with infinite mass. And the idea that it sucks up light doesn't make sense if you don't have a model for it. We have a model. My father and I have a model for that. We can at least tell you our answer in our little model. But these people, all these great people, Kip Thorne, uh, Neil deGrasse, uh, on one of the uh, science evangelists. These people will be forgotten. They will be the same, put in the same boat as the people who believe the Earth was the center of the solar system. They'll be put in the same boat as the people who, who thought that uh, everything was made out of fire and water and Earth, all those things. And they'll be put in the same boat as people who believe the Earth was flat and not a sphere. So think about it. Before you go jumping, before you, you hold on to the Titanic, as, as you may be, you, all these intellectuals, all these theoretical physicists, all are sitting in first class on the Titanic while we in the steerage are pounding on the doors. It's sinking. It's sinking. We're all going to die. And those, oh, look at them. <laughs> so what do you do? You use your head. You critically think. I challenge any of you to go after out there and look at what we're talking about. Go to the CMPS. Watch some of the videos. Watch some of the things we say. Watch, look at some of the ideas. Infinity. Very important thing. You'll get rid of all the multi-universes and all that. Yeah, there are infinite amount, actually, but they're in their own separate space. They don't live in parallel dimensions. Three dimensions, that's what it is. The world is Newtonian. The universe is Newtonian. It doesn't have exotic things. Again, I, you know, most of you are going to go down with the Titanic, and we'll be in our lifeboats waving to you saying, told you so, but it doesn't matter because people are only looking out for their egos now for how they feel. That's way more important than it is for you to be correct in science. It's really hard for you to stand up and say, you know, I've been searching for black holes all my life, these infinite points with infinite mass and with all these different characteristics, and we really haven't found that. We found objects that are pretty dense but they're not black holes. And you know, the Big Bang in reality, we've got a lot of problems with that. We can't start it off. We can't, we can't stop it. We can't get it back. And our ideas to do that, they're pretty lame. When I talked with Dr. Kessley of Stanford Linear Accelerator for my film, Einstein Wrong, he said, I asked him at breakfast pre-interviewing, and I asked him, hey, so, What's it like to be a theoretical physicist? He looked at me and he said, never accuse me of being a theoretical phys physicist. There's nothing theoretical about physics. This is a guy who says he has to unteach his grad students from all this fantasy. Why? Because it's a fantasy world. If you're part of that fantasy world and you sit there and laugh at us, you are, you're, you're running. I, Fred Flintstone, believer in today's theoretical physics, 
am writing my own obituary to be completely and utterly forgotten and not contribute anything to the flow of science except for the advancement of science. That's what you're writing on the wall when you accept everything that you're told. It is a fascinating subject. I, I still at times marvel at how people are lemmings and they will follow off a cliff and talk about the Higgs boson and talk about strangeness and half spin and isospin, uh, isospin and upness, downness, sideways colors. And they talk about it and blah, blah, blah. And they have their conferences and blah, blah, blah. You are absolutely you're forgotten already. The only people that you're going to do an influence are those around you. And it's all an emotional game. There's no science there. So I hope you've enjoyed this little rant, something that, that has always fascinated me, why people relegate themselves to obscurity and not try to find truth. Luckily, there's lots of us doing that. So I applaud all of those great scientists who are not afraid to say, you know, this stuff isn't good, and what, what's wrong with it, and what can we come up better? Thousands of us doing that should join us. Anyways, that's enough for now. And, and always remember, don't take what anyone says on faith. Stay critical. Stay thinking. I'm Dave D. Hilster, your science therapist. Ciao for now.